Hey guys, it's Frank from PBH and behind me is a Coyote Swap 55 F100 that's here at PBH for a few upgrades. Now when we pop the hood on this 55 F100, we notice a few things right off the bat. In the first case, it's gonna be the cooling system. We actually have a little bit of redundancy going on here. Now if you look, we do have a really nice aluminum radiator, we have a coolant recovery tank, we have an expansion tank. Naturally, the radiator being the highest point of the cooling system, it's got a pressurized cap, and so does the expansion tank. So that means we don't need the expansion tank especially since we have a coolant recovery bottle. So I bet when we pull the engine cover off of this Coyote, we're gonna see a lot of hoses that we don't need. Now that being said, this cooling system works. There's no issues with it right now. But if your goal is to clean up the engine bay and simplify things, well, this is one move that you might be thinking about doing on your own project. So looking at this now with the engine cover off, we see that they are using the factory heater hose tubes and the heater hoses. Now. They've been unioned to other hoses to make the connection to the heater core, which is no problem. Again, this works, but we can definitely streamline things just a little bit here. We're gonna be able to get rid of this heater tube that has the forward leg that feeds the coolant expansion tank. We'll be able to get rid of this guy here that goes to the top of the valley water neck. Here, we're gonna put our bleeder screw, get rid of this hose. Then we're gonna get rid of these hot water tubes and put in the aluminum ones that we offer. We'll have the streamlined hoses going back, probably to some unions hooking up to his heater hose. We don't have to worry about the restrictor because that's built into the fitting itself. And we're gonna get rid of the tank and the forward leading hose here and this guy as well. Should clean things up quite a bit. So for the next part of this video, we're gonna have our technician Mike Chamberlain hop in here. And what he's doing is just clearing out the cold air intake and getting some of the hoses disconnected as we're gonna be adjusting a few things. And what you see here, he's just removing the degas bottle that we're gonna be omitting from the cooling system altogether. This process just is basically just unbolting it from where they had it, disconnecting all the hoses, draining the coolant out of the system safely. That way it's out of the way and we can start working on the hoses themselves. Here you see Mike removing the factory heater hot water tubes. There's one on both sides of the engine, driver side and passenger side. This one's the driver side. As you can see, it has that forward leg that goes to the degas bottle, which we're not gonna have in this cooling system in particular. Now Mike is showing you the aluminum piece that we offer as a set. He's gonna bolt that in place of the factory tube that he's already removed and bolt it down. Now we're gonna have some fun. We gotta remove that nipple on the valley water neck and it's pressed in from the factory with a little bit of sealant so you got to really work it he's got some vice grips on there just to work it back and forth get it loose and then you can just pull it out or pry it out all together Here you see Mike uh, just cleaning up the area after we remove the nipple. That way we can use it, tap it, and put the water temp sender there. Now typically, if you didn't have a water temp sender, we would put our bleeder screw kit here. But since the customer does have a set of gauges that have a water temp sender, we're just gonna remove it from the hose that's being omitted from the kit and apply it here to this water neck. Here he's tapping it with an 8th 27 tap, which you don't have to drill it out at all. Make sure you grease it up really good to capture any of the aluminum and put a rag in that neck so you don't have anything fall into the cooling system while you're doing this. Simply fasten it, uh, put some Teflon tape in there, should be good to go. So with the water temp sender installed in the upper water neck, now we're just gonna make the contact to the gauges with the wire just to make some adjustments there and tighten it down so it reads properly. 
Next, Mike is gonna remove the heater hoses that were already installed on the truck. Now you'll notice that they use the factory hoses at the heater tubes with the factory connections, which is fine. And that also includes the restrictor in the passenger side version of that. Now we're not gonna need that restrictor because it's built into the aluminum tubes that we're gonna to use to replace the factory ones. Here, Mike is removing the passenger side uh, heater tube, which is just pried out of place and then replacing it with the new aluminum one from PBH. Once it's set in place, just grab your tools and tighten down the fastener that's supplied in the kit and it'll be ready for use. Now Mike is going to start routing the heater hoses and when we started doing this we realized there was one more thing we needed to add to this conversion. And we're going to go over that here in one second. Alright, so one other thing that we're going to do to this truck along with changing the heater hoses and getting everything tidied up for them is we're gonna add this bypass. Now this is a H bypass. It's actually a vintage air part and this truck actually has a vintage air AC and heater system. Now the trick there is, is that the heater systems in those aftermarket AC units, well, they don't have a bypass built into them. We're running two heater hoses to the core and since there's no bypass, when you are not running the heater and flow isn't going through it, it's just shut off and it's actually limiting flow through the engine itself could lead to overheating issues or just raising the temperature in the cooling system. So this bypass, if we put that in line through the hoses, once the heater core is shut off, it still has the ability to bypass through here. And that's gonna allow the cooling system to continue to flow normally. So this little upgrade right here, we're gonna put it on the engine itself. We're gonna union basically both heater hoses through this H and we're gonna try to hide it under the engine cover so it looks nice and tidy when it's done. So now that Mike has determined where the bypass is going to be located and where the hoses can be routed to hide it under the engine cover, he's going to go ahead and attach it. It's important to note that that bypass is 5 8 on all four corners. This heater core is also 5 8 so all the hoses are going to be the same diameter. If you got a hose that needs to be 3 quarter, uh, we do have provisions for that in our aluminum adapters built into it, but then you might also need a reducer or an expander to go ahead and make that connection on the heater core itself. You definitely want to measure twice and cut once with these hoses since they are universal. In our heater hose kit, you're going to get two 5 8 hoses and one 3 quarter. All the hoses have a 90 degree bend built into them. That provision is there so you can connect them to the new aluminum PBH heater hose tubes. Now on this installation, it did make sense to have a 90 degree hose at the heater core itself. So we went ahead and sold the customer a second set of hoses that we can splice them together. That way the installation looked custom and streamlined all the way through. All right, so let's take a peek at what we ended up looking like here. We got our aluminum hot water tubes in the front of the engine, allowing us to use our universal hose kit as well. We got our H crossover here installed on both of the hoses, making sure the cooling system doesn't have any obstructions. It's all hooked up to the customer supplied vintage air heater core. Then the end result looks a lot more streamlined. It's also gonna fit under his custom engine cover as well. So once everything's said and done, you're really not gonna see a lot of this. It's still gonna function, and it looks a lot better even if you get the engine cover off. All right, so here in front of me are all the pieces that we removed from the cooling system with all the modifications we did here at PBH. Now we still have a completely functioning cooling system out there, but this tank was not needed. Now on the original installation, they ran this expansion tank slash degas bottle similar to a factory one, while still also using the pressurized cap on the radiator and a coolant recovery tank. We simply omitted the expansion tank because the radiator has that feature built into it. We were also able to eliminate this hose here, which connects to the water neck in the valley, and the port that it connects to, well, we just tap that and put the water temp sender in that place. That water temp sender was actually located in this custom piece right here in the hose that feeds the degas bottle, and since it's gone, well, we just removed some of that clutter. Naturally, with the removal of these components, we have a lot cleaner engine bay, and we still have a fully functioning cooling system. Once you got everything reinstalled and ready to go, tighten down, just refill the coolant, let the truck run, get the thermostat open, and normalize the cooling level. 
you can see now that without that degas bottle in place, things just look a little bit more organized. There's less of a distraction when you're looking under the hood at the engine itself and the custom coil covers and the paint. Looks really good under there now. If you have any questions about the products that we use in this video or the installation, make sure you post it up here in the video itself. You can also email us info at pbhperformance.com. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. When you hit the notification bell, hit all so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos or live broadcasts.